Eternally Yours, a program of inspiring music and an eternal message of hope. On today's program, Reverend Mabley's message is titled, Restoration Part 2, The Reward Being in Christ. And our musical guest is Josie Lambert. If not in you, I wonder where Will they ever see the one who really cares? If not in you, how will they find? There's one who heals the broken heart and gives sight to the blind. You're the only Jesus that some will ever see and you're the only words of life that some will ever read so let them see in you the one in whom is all they'll ever need cause you're the only Jesus some will ever see and if not in you then I wonder who will show them love and love alone can make things new if not from you There's one who'll trade their hopelessness for joy in return. You're the only Jesus that some will ever see. And you're the only words of life that some will ever read. So let them see in you the one in whom is all they'll ever need cause you're the only Jesus some will ever see so let him shine let him show let them see some will ever see and you're the only words of life that some will ever read so let them see in you the one in whom is all they'll ever need cause you're the only Jesus you're some will ever see so let him shine it's his light Christ in you thank you Josie Lambert once again for that anointed song and now sharing from my heart in Christ a second message on restoration uh, this message is about being restored into the image of God. Restored into the image of God. God created mankind in his image and likeness, but we got marred by sin. Our forefathers, Adam and Eve, sinned, and we received that sinful nature. And yes, we received knowledge of good and evil, but the problem is, in our nature, there's a capacity to do evil. That's why one cannot get to heaven by good works. Hear me again. You cannot get to heaven by good works. The reason is that if you do good works, and that old sinful nature we got from Adam that has knowledge of good and evil, 
It is still done within a nature that is capable of evil. And the book of Habakkuk chapter one says, God cannot look on sin. So he cannot bless you and be in your life what he wants to and change us into the image of God's likeness, the image that was lost. And today I'm going to talk about the reward of being in Christ and following him because it enables a restoration of the God image in your life and mine. And we need that. Oh, how we need that. So Adam and Eve and sinned against God and we received their sinful nature. And the most wonderful part of being a Christian besides well, perhaps even more wonderful, is a life-love relationship with Holy Father through Christ, a love relationship. But the most wonderful thing about it is, is that you get a new nature. God actually puts the nature of Him in you and me when we become a Christian. Yes, He does. It's amazing. Hear it from God's Word. 1 Corinthians 5, 17 to 21. And God's word clearly says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. And I'm standing here before you doing my best to do the ministry of restoration, the ministry of reconciliation. That is that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing, not putting their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation, the word of restoration. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us, pleading through me this day, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he had made him, Jesus, who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So in the restoration of the God image in your life and mine, which is a reward of being in Christ and a reward of following Christ, make sure you're in Christ. Phone in, the prayer line person will help you come to know Christ in your heart. Because when you receive Jesus Christ as Lord, God puts his nature in you. Behold, old things are passed away, all things have become new. You ever felt like you'd like to begin life over again? <laughs> That's what happens really in a, in a great sense when you become a Christian. So the analogy of a branch symbolizes restoration with God. Isaiah 4 verse 2 says, In that day shall the branch of the Lord be beautiful and glorious. He's talking about his children. And the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and comely for them that are escaped. And John 15, 1 to 5 in the New Testament, the words of Jesus says it so beautifully, because you and I are to be a branch of the Lord. Amen. Jesus said, I am the true vine. My father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that bears not fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean through the word I have spoken to you, said Jesus. Abide in me, and I in you, as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can you, except you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abides in me and I in him, the same will bring forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. Now when Jesus said those profound words, without me you can do nothing. Well, of course we can do things without Jesus that are naughty and bad. But what I believe he meant was without him, you cannot do anything that's worthwhile. And anything that you do in the Lord makes a mark for eternity, says that in Ecclesiastes 3. Oh, it is so precious to realize that. So Jesus is saying he is the vine, we are the branches. 
And if you abide in him as your Lord and follow him, you will have the reward of being restored in your life, the God image, the image and likeness of Jesus, shining through you, shining through me, I pray. Genesis 1, 26 says it so clearly. God said, let us make man in our image. Notice he says us. You know who he was talking about? God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Let us make mankind. Three persons, one true God. Let us make man in our image. So Adam and Eve were originally created in God's image. But again, like I said, we were marred by sin and receiving the sin nature. So we need to receive the new nature, the sinless nature from God. Behold, if anyone's in Christ, he's a new person. All things are passed away. All things have become new. Again, as I shared earlier in 1 Corinthians chapter 5. So we, if we follow Christ, there's a reward. There'll be a restoration of the God image in your life and mine. Hallelujah. So let's follow God and have his image stronger in our lives. Amen. It says clearly in 1 Corinthians 15, 49 and 50. Oh, hear with your hearts. <laughs> this is awesome. As we have borne the image of the earthly, Adam and Eve, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's right. God is into restoring the image of him in your life and mine through Christ the Lord. Hallelujah. That's why Jesus said, he's the vine and you're the branch. You see, you lop off a, a branch from the vine, it will die, it will shrivel and die. But if that branch remains linked to the vine and a tree, it will live and bear fruit. And we are to be linked with our holy vine, Jesus. And the reward of following him and having Jesus Christ as Lord is that God's image will shine in and through our lives. Hallelujah. More like Christ. This is the goal of God. Galatians 4.19, Paul said, I labor till Christ be formed in you. And the laboring I'm doing through the telecast is Christ be formed in you, dear people. And as I follow Jesus, my hope and my prayer, and I believe it's Christ more formed in me, we need to follow Jesus above all else. Keep our eyes and focus on Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. For the image of God, like he said in 1 Corinthians 15, 49, is you bore the image of the earthly. You shall also bear the image of the heavenly. That's counting for Christians. <laughs> Those who have Jesus Christ as Lord, God's word says you bear the image of him. Hallelujah. God's image is shining through us. Ephesians 2, 10 and 19 tells us clearly, in Christ there is restoration to God's image, likeness in us. Ephesians 2, 10 and 19, we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained for us that we should walk in them. Now, therefore, we are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. That means when you are outside Christ, you're not a Christian. You are outside Christ. But when you become a Christian, you are inside Christ, clothed in Christ. He is the vine and we are the branches. Hallelujah. We stay close to him, follow him, love him, serve him. And the reward will be the God image restored in your life and mine. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Romans 8, 29, here with your dear hearts. And thank you so much for hearing this good word. For whom he did for no that's the Christians, he also did predestined to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ, his son, our Lord, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Right there in God's word, it says that God has predestined that you and I will be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. He's working on this now. And the eternity future, in a twinkling of an eye, it will be done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ephesians 2, 4 to 6, and the restoration of intimacy in the God image more stronger in your life and mine. Ephesians 2, 4 to 6, 
God the Father, rich in mercy, even when we were yet dead in sins, he quickened us together and made us sit together and raised us up together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Notice three togethers in Christ, raised up in heavenly places. What does that mean to you and me as having Jesus as Lord? Oh, I know that I know, I know that it means. We are raised up together with him in victory and authority over the world, the devil, the old sinful nature as we follow Christ. And that reward is that God image will be more strong in our lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In intimacy, raised up together, seated together. Hallelujah. And Colossians 3 verse 1 to 4 says, if you are risen with Christ and every Christian that's following Jesus Christ, the Father said in Ephesians 2, 2 to 4, that's where you are positionally in authority and in victory, risen with Christ. And that Colossians 3, 1 to 4 says, if you're risen with Christ, you know if you are because the word says you are and you need to be a Christian for it to be real. Amen? So if you're risen with Christ, seek those things which are above which I said afresh to the Lord this morning, I seek those things which are above. Thank you, Father, I'm risen with Christ. And then he says there in those words, he says, where Christ the Lord reigns in majesty. And that's what we seek. We seek the Lord Jesus. We keep our focus on Jesus, our love and our heart on Christ, amen. And then he says, set your affections on things above for you are dead. What does that mean you are dead? You're dead to living that life in that old sinful nature from Adam and Eve. By the death of Christ, you're crucified with Christ and the old sinful nature was put to death. That you will walk in the new nature you got when you became a Christian. Hallelujah. For then it says you are dead and your life is hid, hid with Christ. Like I said earlier, clothed in Christ. Hid with Christ and Holy Father. And when Christ appears, Christ's likeness in your life and mine, we appear with him in glory. Appear with him in glory. You know, I, coming to a close very soon, I want to appeal to your hearts to realize this. This revelation, this deeper revelation came to me within the last few days. The John 17 prayer that Jesus prayed, that's for every Christian that will believe it and receive it. It's for every Christian that John 17 prayer, that departing blessing of that prayer for all the people that believe. He said, he said, I do not pray for those alone, John 17, 20 to 22, for that means a disciple, but also for those who will believe in me through the word. When you believe in Jesus Christ as Lord, you believe in him through the word of God. You believe in him through the word of the apostles. So this prayer is for you and me, dear ones. Hallelujah. And he says that we may be one, that's intimacy and relationship. His Father and Jesus are one. Christ in Father, and we may be one in Him and Father, that the world may believe that you sent Jesus. That's evangelism. And He says, the glory which you gave me, I have given them. And this is a part that just came to me about this prayer. I've prayed this prayer and believed this prayer for a very long while. But this part, He said, the glory which you gave me, I have given them. In other words, He wasn't praying for us to have the glory in this John 17 prayer. He was declaring to the Father that he's already given us his glory. Do you realize, Christians, that Christ gave you his glory? Oh, don't be troubled by that scripture in the Old Testament. I believe it's in Isaiah that says, my glory I will not give to another. Folks, that's speaking about the other. Another is the heathen. <laughs> Christ's not going to give his glory to the heathen. He gave his glory to his children. Why did he give his disciples? Why did he give to us who follow Jesus Christ as Lord, his glory? That we may be one with him and Father. Because then that's in his priestly prayer. Here with your hearts from the word of God. The glory which you gave me, I have given them, said Jesus, that they may be one, just as we are one. Then he said, Father, I desire that they also whom you gave me Father gave Jesus to reign in our lives, Christians. He said, I desire, means he prays, that all those whom you gave me may be with me where I am. Again, where is he? 
He's seated in heavenly places and authority. He's granted victory already for you and me over the world, the devil, and the old sinful nature. Hallelujah. So he prayed that we will be where he is and that we may behold his glory that he already has given us, which Father gave Jesus before the foundation of the world. Oh, praise the living God. 1 John 4, 17, love has been perfected among us in this because we have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. <laughs> oh, blessed Christians. In coming to a close, I think we have only scratched the surface of our full inheritance as God's children through Christ the Lord. And always remember, blessed Holy Spirit is the angel agent of our restoration. <laughs> and the Blessed Holy Spirit is the one that works in us to make us more like Jesus. So may he outpour his spirit upon us and seal these words to our hearts forever and ever in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Once again, dear ones, I share that it is a joy to give God's word over the airways, an absolute joy and honor that God has bestowed in my life. And as long as I can, I plan to continue to do this, to bless your lives and to honor my King Jesus. And you know, you listeners, you viewers out there in television land, you're an important part of what God's doing through my life. Your letters of encouragement, which I do read personally, uh, your letters of support, and uh, your comments and your prayer requests, they're important and they are diligently prayed over. So we would love to hear from you. I put a challenge out to you, precious people. Let's see which province will send the most responses to this ministry. So far it's been Ontario. The rest of you, as God bids you, do let us hear from you. And once again, I have something to offer you to help you grow in the Lord. Any of you out there like Elvis Presley music? This fellow, Michael J. I was honored with leading him to Christ about two years ago. Um, he sings just like Elvis Presley. Doesn't look like him, but he sings like him. And uh, he loves the Lord. And one day I had a CD on and a dear co-worker named Rebecca, she said to me, that's Elvis. And I said, no, it's Michael J. She argued with me <laughs> and he is just blessed and anointed. I think he's more anointed than Elvis. If you want to order it, find out for yourself. And this other one is a music CD of Eternally Yours Telecast Singers. They're all anointed, they all love God, and they will lift your heart, fill your home with the praises of God through God's singers. These are both available for a $20 donation. And lastly, the empowering emotion of joy. <laughs> we all need more joy. This is my message is about the empowering emotion of joy. You know, the greatest emotion on planet Earth is love, but I'm telling you that joy is pretty close to it. <laughs> you want more joy in your life? Order this CD. It's uh, the empowering emotion of joy, what God has uh, put in my heart, a four-part series, no testimonies, just about the joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. You want more strength? Get more of God's joy in your life. So I hope you order any one of these for a $20 donation. We would love to hear from you. May God bless you richly, and may you continue to watch Eternally Yours. And I'll be back in a few moments with Tender Time. Amen. Oh, beloved ones, and coming to a close, I, I know the Lord has touched your heart if you've been listening and watching about the restoration of the God image in our lives. And I'm sure that some of you have been convicted, oh Lord, that's so much more needed in my life. So why don't we come humbly to God together, together, you and I, folks, because the Lord said he exalts the humble and he resists the proud. Let us humbly acknowledge we come short of the God image in our lives. And let us pray for restoration of intimacy restoration of God's working in our lives and always, always remembering it's done by the Holy Spirit. Sometimes in our services, I'll say to the people, take a big sigh, and they do. Oh, 
It's God that works in us the will and the do of His good pleasure. And the whole Christian walk is to be done by the Holy Spirit. In fact, I'm totally convinced the only one that can totally live the Christian life is Christ the Lord. So let us yield together for Christ the Lord to live His resurrected life in us and with us and through us. Let us repent and let us receive His working to restore us more to the image of Christ. It's our destiny, amen. Simply pray along with me. Oh, Heavenly Father, we're so thankful that it is our destiny. As we bore the image of the earthly, we will bear the image of the heavenly, our Lord Jesus Christ. God, we just ask for humbly forgive us, Lord, for things we said or done that would trouble this working, your working in us to restore that image of Christ in us. Christ be formed in us, O oh God, in a greater way this day going forward. I pray that people repent, and I repent too. Anything we've done, thought, word, deed, or reaction that's hindered your working, Lord, of us having more the image of Christ shining through our lives, Lord. O oh, living God Almighty, come and bind up and heal us, Lord. Restore our intimacy with you, Lord. May the glory that Jesus said he's given us envelop us right now. Oh, Father, your glory envelop us. May the, may the dear viewers feel your presence, Jesus, even as I do, Father. I'll pour your love and your healing power and your sweet presence upon us, each one. Yes, Jesus, let us experience the glory you've given us, your children, and help each one to sincerely confess, Jesus Christ, you're my Lord. Help us grow in grace, Father. Help us love your word. Help us to pray your word in our lives. Help us to believe and receive your image formed in us, Christ formed in us. This is my prayer for all the viewers, Lord, in Jesus' holy name, and remind us to pray for each other. Amen and amen. If this telecast has ministered to you, would you please prayerfully consider becoming a financial partner? that we may continue to reach out for God's glory. It would be wonderful to hear from you.